What's cooking everybody? Dave Altizer here with Kino Tika. Today we're talking about 10 things to know about the Panasonic G9. The number one thing to know about this camera is that the EVF on this thing is insane. It's got a 0.83x magnification. To put that into perspective, the GH5 has a 0.67x, A7R3 has a 0.78x magnification. So the magnification on this is really unheard of and it really is a joy to use. The second thing to know about this camera is that the EVF readout speed can go between 60 frames per second and 120 frames per second. 120 is unbelievable because it really feels like you're looking through a real viewfinder. 120 frames per second on the iPad Pro, if you've ever seen it with ProMotion, looks amazing. If you have a TV that can do this, sports look incredible at that high frame rate, video games. So you're getting that same really crazy frame rate inside the EVF. You don't get it on the LCD screen, but in the EVF you have it and it looks really realistic. The third thing to know about this camera is that it has a top LCD plate. It can even light up like so. It's really unique to see this on a mirrorless camera. In fact, the only other mirrorless camera that I know of that has a top LCD plate is the discontinued NX1 from Samsung and the medium format Fuji camera. That's it, that's the only mirrorless cameras that I'm aware of that have a top LCD. And if that's something that you enjoy on a DSLR, you're gonna feel right at home using the Panasonic G9. The fourth thing to know about this camera is that it has the same unbelievably stable image stabilization from the GH5 that's rated at 6.5 stops. This is really amazing. The Olympus camera has a similar in-body image stabilization. This is beating Sony out quite a bit. And the stabilization when you're shooting video or doing anything in live view, it just looks buttery smooth. It looks like a gimbal when you're tracking shots and doing video shots. And if you're taking a picture using a slow shutter speed, that image stabilization really helps out. I love it and it's really unique to the Panasonic line and I hope that they continue to develop this and make it even better. But goodness gracious, it is really nice on this camera. The fifth thing to know about this camera is that it actually is competing with the cameras from Canon and Nikon like the 1DX or the D5 line because it has a ridiculous burst rate. In fact, you can do up to 20 frames per second in continuous shooting using the electronic shutter up to 50 frames. And you can do nine frames per second using the mechanical shutter in continuous autofocus and it's super fast. It's really nice to have on a Panasonic camera. There's no other camera like this that's doing bursts like this in the Micro Four Third lineup, and I really like it. It's fast. The sixth thing to know about this camera is that it has the ability to be charged over the USB port. Now it is one of those weird USB 3 ports that looks like the number three. You know what I'm talking about? I don't know what they call it, but it's that really weird port that comes with all your hard drives. That's all they have here, which is odd because the GH5 has a USB C port on it. I don't know why they wouldn't carry that over. Anyways, you can charge the camera over the USB port, but not while it's turned on, only when it's turned off. It's really convenient to have. You just carry one of those little battery packs around with you that you charge your phone with and you can charge this camera, but only when it's turned off. The seventh thing to know about this camera is actually kind of an odd one. This little function switch, I really like it. You can customize whatever you want on this switch uh, to turn on and off anything you want. I have it set to go into silent shooting mode. Right now I'm taking burst images and then I switch it back and it's back to the normal mode. So by flipping that switch, I've customized it to be silent shooting. You can have it customized to turn on face tracking mode. You can have it turn on peaking. You can have it do all sorts of different things in the menu. And having a physical switch like this is just so satisfying to click. And being able to customize the switch to be anything that you want is fantastic. Thank you, Panasonic. The eighth thing to know about this camera is that you can crank this thing into 80 megapixels. Now it's not a 80 megapixel camera, but it does do this thing that a lot of these in-body image stabilization cameras do where it takes multiple pictures and stitches them together by moving the sensor slightly and it creates a high megapixel image. You have to keep it on a tripod. You have to take pictures of still lifes or landscapes without tons of wind. Otherwise you're gonna see some weird blurry objects and things there, but it is nice to have if you are a product photographer in particular, 80 megapixels is fantastic. 
the ninth thing to know about this camera is that Panasonic has worked really hard to make the JPEG processing much better on this camera. In fact, it's the best JPEG processing that I've ever seen on a Panasonic camera, and it really rivals Canon and Fuji, which are my two favorite JPEG processing cameras, meaning take a picture, just post it, no raw processing needed, straight out of the camera, the JPEGs look great. Believe it or not, lots of cameras can't do this very well. Sony in particular tends to look pretty bad. They've really dialed that in here with the Panasonic G9, even more so than the GH5 in my opinion. So if you want good out of camera JPEGs, this camera is the one to get. And the last thing to know about this camera is that the colors are fabulous. Yes, the colors on this thing are really, really great which is surprising because it uses the same sensor as the GH5. The GH5 does have good color, but I'm seeing some different results here. I wasn't super impressed when I used the GH5 initially, and straight out of the gate, it's really competing with Fuji and Canon when it comes to color science, in my opinion. Maybe even a little bit better in some respects. It definitely is the best color reproduction I've ever seen on a Panasonic. So if skin tones, blue skies, and green greens are something that you want, and you don't want plasticky, zombie-looking skin tones like you would get on a Sony camera, <laughs> then check this thing out. So that about does it for the top 10 things to know about this camera, the G9. It really feels great in the hands. I really think you should pick one up and see how you like it. I personally really am a huge fan of this camera. Because I'm a video shooter, I will still lean more towards the GH5 and the GH5S, but this camera really is a powerful beast. If you guys have any questions about this camera, the G9, make sure to post them below. And please subscribe to the channel. We have lots of content coming out for you guys and we want you to see it. Once again, I'm Dave Altizer. This is Kino Tika. See you next time.